Three, two, one. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome once again to Down to Hell. Me, Doug, and Hello. Steph. I was just trying to figure out the laptop. My wife, co host. Uh, we are in real time in the world, uh, eight o'clock Eastern time, Thursday, March the 24th. It might be any day of any year, at any time of the day or night. When you're watching us subsequently, welcome to all those currently with us live in the chat. Uh, and we will be watching what you're saying and looking if I could for any questions. Find uh, it. We're having trouble pulling the um, the chat up at the moment. Oh, there, there it is. Oh, there we are. Okay, now we have it. Uh, so we'll um, look out for your questions. Remember also all the time that uh, you, as well as what we're specifically talking about, you can you can use this as a kind of virtual Q and A for me or indeed for Steph. Um, I have so, nothing to say. <laughs> she has nothing to say, but that doesn't stop you asking her. No. Um, uh, so, you know, anything Hellraiser related or anything else Lee related that you'd like to fire us at, at us, we'll look out. A reminder to for put your questions. live chat on and not top chat, by the way. What's the difference? Um, I don't know. I think, I think top chat. Uh, it says some messages such as potential spam may not be visible. Top chat. It's very selective on what gets shown for some reason. Live chat is disputable leader of the gang. As it happens, I don't, I don't know what you're saying. What are you saying? I'm singing the um, Kate Bush. Uh, Kate Bush. <laughs> the theme song to Top Dare Cat. You want a divorce? Top Cat. You know Top Cat. I think he was. Was he called Boss Cat? over here possibly I, I don't one know. of the best of the Hanna-Barbera <laughs> cartoons it was kind of a, a cartoon version of um Bilko the Phil Silver show it was it was always on in the UK and it had the most wonderful title sequence what kind of and tangent title are you off on already um on a top a top chat top <sighs> chat do, 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 do. this is not why people are here yeah, he's a he's a number one hit top cat um uh down to hell brought to you by horror hub remember horror hub is your one-stop shop for all things horror um so it's kind of like uh if if i if i'm not getting this right because i usually don't but people will correct me like steph or the archangel david good evening david good evening doug good evening um uh so it's, it's a bit like etsy or instagram except it's horror only horror just horror all the time i'd say it's more like etsy not instagram more like etsy than instagram so instagram it's, is a wasteland it's horror vendors vending their horrific products for you to purchase and it's like uh, it's a it's like a genre specific etsy is basically what it is there you go uh, and you also find screamio there which is much like cameo but again uh, horror only um all the time um uh, i'll uh, a, a couple of parish notices um you have to explain to people what that is because i bet you a lot notices? of people don't know what that is oh, it's a, a, probably a very english expression it's a very church it's not of it's not it's, but it is old-fashioned yeah. right well it, it's you know from going to church there would be parish notices that the young wives will be holding a coffee morning in the <laughs> great hall on what the great hall where did that come from i, I don't, don't know. know in the hall you know in the um and various other things going on in in the church and people who died and so forth parish notices anyway parish notices um at the beginning of last week when uh danny filth was our guest and i'll um, interrupt myself again to remind you that all the shows with our previous guests and indeed um shows with just uh, steph and i uh are available YouTube with our, you know, our various guests, Corey Taylor of Slipknot, Danny Filth, as I said last week, uh, Robert Englund, um, who am I missing? Dave Schrader, paranormal talk show host, Steve Gonzalo, Gonzalves, um, Ghost Hunter, Barbie Wilde, my fellow Cenobite. That was an excellent show. It was, we can have her back. Uh, Tom Savini, who am I missing? 
lots of people. Probably my uh, this is like going into a store and Mike, drawing a blank. Mike Schiff, Mike who Schiff. just directed the documentary Peaches on Christ. the Did history of metal Christ? and horror, Peaches Christ. Um, shall I mention that? No. 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 Okay. Um, you get too. Um, you get very you can, excited about stuff before things I? are inked. Well, you can't do that. What's life if you can't no, get no, excited no, no. about it? Well, we can. But well, it is inked now. No. 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 Stop. Okay. Stop. Okay. Um, uh, if, 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 uh, yeah. So, all, all, so all, all of those you can you can find in the uh, on the Horror Hub YouTube channel if you go and seek them out. Um, please subscribe. Um, it does matter, and it does make a difference. Uh, uh, it, if only to otherwise, our standing there's no fucking point, right? We're all wasting our time. Thank yes. you very much for watching. Good night. <laughs> um, uh, no, but it does help uh, us along if you subscribe, and also means that as things uh, develop and change here, uh, you will know what's going on as soon as we do, more or less. There, I just uh, wrestled um, my way through a Facebook post. Well done. Um, I'll uh, uh, I'll jump back a couple of weeks because, as I as I was trying to say a little while ago, um, at the beginning of last week's episode, when Danny Filth was the guest, um, somebody somebody asked if my my pooper was super. <laughs> um, the previous week, I'd mentioned that I was having my plus two year tests, uh, having been two years ago diagnosed with colon cancer. Um, so I had, in the week preceding the show with Danny, had my plus two years CT scan and colonoscopy, and they came up all clear, all clear. Um, so I no longer have canker of the anal, anal canal. canal. <laughs> I, I, I think people get really weirded out when we joke about cancer. Do they? I I'm not so. joking seen... about cancer. No, it's a fucking can... serious thing. And it was a horrible not. day when Dr. Patel, my gastroenterologist, put his hand on my shoulder and informed me that he'd just found this thing lurking up my butt. It was not what I was expecting mm. to hear. I'm not making light no. of cancer at all. You know, it's just I'm talking about having a tumor up my shitter. And if you can't, the only way to talk about that <laughs> is to make fun of it, it seems to me. Um, and I had my. Um, my virtual video visit with uh, my surgeon um, this morning. And uh, so he's very happy and uh, everything is looking good going forward, apart from the fact that they've decided we'll do it all over again next fucking year. Um, but uh, and my, um, my surgeon is now moving on to other things. So I was able to say to him, for the first time in my life, uh, without making a silly joke, I said to him I could actually mean it, that I thanked him from the bottom of my heart and from the heart of my bottom, um, which he thought was very funny. Uh, so I can't remember who it was, was asking, but th there it is. My, my, my pooper is super, um, <laughs> and we won't talk about my pooper uh, Anymore. for another 12 months at least. I make this solemn promise to you. Um, uh, next Thursday, I can announce to you all that our very special, super wonderful guest is the magnificent Mr. Bill Mosley. Uh, Chop Top, Chainsaw Massacre 2, uh, and of course, uh, House of a Thousand Corpses, and um, that other one, The Devil's Rejects, and Down to Hell, and... Was he Down the, to he, hell? That's us. Three, th that's us. Three. <laughs> uh, well, he will be as of next week. He'll yeah. also be in Down to Hell, as well as Three from Hell, which is what I was trying to say. Uh, Seen a lot of Bill this year, which is good. Yes. It's been a while. It's always good to see Bill. I, I've missed I, him. I love Bill. Me too. Uh, so that's uh, that's Thursday next week. And um, uh, then a little, a, a little bit of an advanced plug. Um, if you can pop the uh, the book cover image up on screen for us, David. Coming right now. Oops. Boom. And boop. There it is. Okay. Um, so this this is a a book that is so brand new. Um, you can only get it on pre-sale at the moment. Um, it's a book that I have contributed to. 
Uh, and it's a joint venture between Howard Berger and um, Marshall Julius. Marshall is a journalist and uh, writer. Um, Howard Berger, for anyone who doesn't know, is the B in KNB, Kurtzman, Nicotero, Nicotero, and Berger. Um, and uh, any horror fan, or, or indeed fan of uh, not just horror films, will remember that there was a time when you couldn't go and see a film uh, without the special effects being done by uh, KNB. Um, I never paid attention to that stuff. Didn't you? Mm, directors or you were you were never a, a watcher of of uh, credits. Mm -mm. No, not, not typically. I always did. Mm. I don't know. That's because you, you're in the business. You but you always rush me out of the cinema. <gasps> How very dare you? Yeah, I would. <laughs> Such thing. <laughs> you saying? You sort of come on, come on. No, I, I feel I like, like now a lot of times you need to credits. stay because there's you know there's a lot of times bloopers which you know oh, you feel like you're gonna miss something only pixar has done that to yeah, us like done no, you gotta stay well. you might miss something yes. or there'll be something but we don't even go to right the movies the end so the... not for a while no no we should start I have a fear doing of getting again. shot in the theater so uh <laughs> that master, ruin that for us <laughs> masters of makeup effects um as i say i contributed to it i, I wasn't quite sure why because i'm I'm not a master of makeup effects at all, although I have been credited. You certainly have worn them. Um, I certainly have worn them, and that was the reason uh, why. And they've talked to just about anyone who is anyone. Um, uh, it's available for pre-sale now. Um, I actually haven't seen a copy of the book. Um, I think it goes on sale at the beginning of September. I think it's September the 1st in the United Kingdom first, for some reason. Marshall is based in, in the UK, so maybe that's, a, that's to do with his publishers, I'm not sure. Uh, and then September the 6th, I believe, in this country. But you can order it uh, pre-sale now. And um, nobody else knows this at this point, except for me and Steph. Um, uh, I don't know. What are you talking about? I don't know anything. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, no, but the Archangel doesn't know this, which is strange because the Archangel sees all and knows all. But he doesn't know this, that... Um, uh, I mean, you're looking at me like I, that. Because I don't do know, know what you're about to say. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have invited Marshall and oh. Howard to be guests on Down to Hell, and they have gleefully accepted it. Uh, and they uh, have said that they want to do it sooner rather than later. Are we're, they both Brits? We're, no. Uh, how it is American. Okay. Um, so are we going to need uh, subtitles? Or? <laughs> <laughs> don't, you don't need subtitles for me. Some people do. Some people do, some of the time. I have subtitles on all the time. I just prefer them. Um, you do too, some deaf. Well, you have to because actors mumble these days. You can, uh, you, there's even a commercial now taking the piss out of that. Have you, have you seen that? I have not. Yeah. It's like a Mexican standoff in a Western, and then there's there's a, and they're mumbling. a girl off to the side on, on her sofa with a mug of coffee saying, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Something about three cucumbers and, a, yeah, and an empty rain boot? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but it, it's true. and It's, it's, it's hard work trying to pay attention to what the fuck people are saying. It's partly, it is partly just mumbling. Uh, and it's I think so you don't appear as though you're acting. Well, I, I think there's a level of that as well. There is a kind of shorthand that, that the less you emote, the less emotion you put into what you're doing in both your face and your voice, the better you're acting. I think it's also because directors all have headphones on these days because they live in Video Village. That didn't used to be the case. Uh, Tell um, them what Video Village is. That's Pro, that's professional speak. Uh, it is video. video is. Well, it simply means that that um, that whereas directors used to be be right on set, right right with the camera, uh, often crouching underneath the camera, even even for close ups, they'd be they'd be right with you, and they'd be communicating immediately with you, and 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 that was how they they saw what was being filmed. 
Uh, now there is video relay, so directors are not on set. They sit in an area away from the set with, uh, you know, producer, ADs, etc., cetera. Um, and they're watching a video monitor, which the huge advantage of that, of course, is that they see exactly what's in frame. They're not seeing the real world picture on set. They're seeing what the camera operator is seeing within within the frame. So they know if the framing is slightly off, if there's, you know, if 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 they want the nun to be in the edge of the frame, they know if it is, and if when or when, you know, and if camera moves uh, go wrong. And they have headphones on. So they're hearing everything the sound man is hearing. And I think that tends to artificially boost the sound. I notice if I've got headphones in when I'm watching TV, I never have trouble uh, fully fully registering what people are saying. I think it happens when you, particularly when you go through a sound bar and the subwoofers kick in. Mm. There's also technical issues, which I don't understand, which is the balance between uh, uh, volume levels for dialogue and for music. It's How quite, did we get here? Quite often. <laughs> Quite often the Why dark. are we here? Why are we here? How did we get here? Surely not to live in pain and fear. We're never going I, to talk about what we planned on talking about. I, how are we? Seriously, I, how did we get here? I, I, oh, because I asked if we were going to need an interpreter. I'm here. See, you have even forgotten I'm here that. because I met you. <laughs> and you changed anyway, my life. Anyway, we will not need an interpreter anyway, because there's no. two, okay. be two Americans, English, two yes. Brits. No, Marshall is English, but Howard is American. Yes. But me? Yes. The oh, American, I see. Two, two, two Americans. Brits, two well, Americans. And, and David makes three. Anyway. Ah. So, yes. so we, think, we think April the 21st or April the, the 28th. Uh, there will, by the way, be no show on April the 14th um, uh, because we'll be in Nashville for the Full Moon Blood and Ink convention. So that Thursday, there won't be a show. But immediately after Nashville, um, one of those two weeks, uh, Marshall and Howard will be on to talk about the book, which I think will be pretty cool. Flash um, Franck says, <coughs> I can barely read this because I don't have my glasses. Oh. Dr. Jordan Peterson, whom I love very, very much, says one of the rules to life is to be clear in your speech. I like that. There you go. Obviously yes. not just audible, but we like intentions. Dr. Jordan Peterson. Not everybody does. No. But, um, uh, so that's that no show on the 14th and then Howard and Marshall uh, immediately after um, and um, Bill Mosley next Thursday. Mm -hmm. Is that it with everything? I guess. Thank you. You know better than I would. Um, I just show up. Same. <laughs> <laughs> kind of roll in five um, minutes beforehand. Coincidentally to something we thought we might turn our attentions to um, this week, I ordered three books from Amazon last night. That's not uncommon. Uh, I order books much faster than I read them. You read pretty quickly, I have to say. I, I don't think I do. I think I read pretty well. I also, I, I tend to start reading big fat books. I'm reading a biography of Henry the Seventh at the moment called Jeez. The Winter King, which is very good. And uh, in timely fashion, uh, am I wearing Peter Cushing today? Uh, asks George. Good Lord. Uh, had, had you, had George, you George will do. Have George, I, will George. Do. yes, George, Peter Cushing. With a, with a little Peter Cushing signature. The great God, Peter Cushing. Um, uh, in timely fashion, reading, uh, a, a, is it Catherine Belton? I may be completely misremembering that name, called Putin's People, uh, was published a couple of years ago. Uh, how the KGB took back Russia and challenged the West. Um, so it's all about Putin and all those naughty oligarchs we keep hearing who raped Russia and ran off with the people's money and bought houses in London uh, for the most part, and then football clubs, and it's all catching up with them now, which is good. So uh, those two I'm reading at the moment, um, 
and also a history of the goddess I'm reading. I don't think that's very good. It's not very well written. It's kind of written like a 14 year old doing a school thesis. A book report. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, that's it's always interesting territory. Um, none of that has anything to do with the three Absolutely books that I bought not. on Amazon oh, last about night. What we were talking about. They, they, the, the impetus to do that has kind of been nudged by conversations that we've had here on Down to Hell uh, because it's brought up the fact that when I was a boy, I wanted to be a paranormal investigator. It seemed to me to and be... And a horse. And a horse. Well, I, it's not... Well, I did. I was... Oh God. No, don't go there. Well, I specifically wanted no, to No, please be, go there. I specifically <laughs> wanted to be champion the Wonder Horse. Um... I loved Champion the Wonder Horse, which I watched when I was when I was a small boy. Yeah. And when I when I had to walk anywhere, which I did a lot because I'm English and we do, I didn't walk, I ran. And when I ran, I galloped and I turned into Champion the Wonder Horse. I I was <laughs> I, I loved um stop laughing. Oh gosh. I, I'm I, I'm just looking at stuff right now that's <laughs> Um, you, you wouldn't consider yourself like a brony or anything, right? No. Like a, like a what? A brony. A brony? I've Dudes no idea who are into My Little Pony. Like uh, a really? lot. Really? No. And not this is good long ways. before My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. We're talking, about, we're talking about a wild stallion, a beautiful ah, wild, wild like stallion. Here. Like sea biscuit. No, not like a ray horse, racehorse. Like a proper like a, wild like, stallion, but who was who was the 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 friend of Ricky, I think the boy was. A pale horse, perhaps? It, it was a pale horse, but nothing to do with the apocalypse. Um, Champion was wonderful. I love that idea that a small boy had a wild animal as a friend. I love the idea of having a wild animal as a friend. Um, I, I, I Doug the I, Champion Wonder Horse. Boy, do I have a movie for you. <laughs> oh, I was, Mr. Hands? I, Tarzan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my wife, everybody. Nobody um, knows that is. Nobody uh, heard that. Yeah, sure, nobody knows that or heard it. Um, uh, <laughs> well, I was very young at the time. The, it's cute. The, it, no, it, it, the point it's is this. I, I thought I was a fire truck as a kid. But I was <laughs> lying in bed one night and I suddenly had the realization, and it was a devastating realization, <sighs> that I was never going to be a horse. And I think it, I think it wasn't, you know, I think it was a kind of consciousness stage because it was, and it, I think it was rather sad for me because it was kind of the death of magical thinking. Mm. It was a realization that things are fixed and locked in this world. And that, you know, for fuck's sake, I was going to have to be me for the rest of my life. And I couldn't be anyone else or anything else. Maybe I'm an actor because that allows me to be other people, not horses yet. But David, you never know. David wanted to be a fire truck. David wanted to be a fire truck. <laughs> to, yeah, my, um, I made the noise and everything. The first, the first <laughs> single I owned, I can't deal with it. Not, I, not that I bought with my own money, that was She Loves You by the Beatles, but, but bought for me by my parents was flick the little fire engine um i should have had that if well you you'll you'll find it on youtube it, it's not on spotify i know because i was looking for it recently i'm a little fire engine flick is my name they wouldn't let me put out fires but i did it just the same um it's it's rather lovely i think you might appreciate it david 8 30 and we haven't mentioned ghosts yet no we haven't um we will do now so tell me about no but tell me about wanting to be a fire truck first david i think that's beautiful well i don't know i mean i i used to um i remember this vividly so i used to just have all these like toy fire trucks and then um it was career day when I was in kindergarten and somebody in my class. That's a lot of fucking pressure for kindergarten. Gee. Right. What is career day? Well, oh, no, no. I mean, like, the that's when they had, like, um, if your dad was a cop, you know, or mom was oh, a, right. yeah, they would come in and talk. 
a really mean cop joke, but I stopped myself. So, <laughs> good, good. I guess somebody in one of the grades, their dad was a firefighter, and then my teacher told one of the firefighters that I did a book report on fire trucks, and he put the helmet on me, and I shot the hose and everything. And whenever I would see a fire truck outside, this is where it gets really weird, I would just like immediately leave my house and start chasing it down the street and making the siren noise. Wow. I didn't have a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Just fine. Oh, but that's wonderful. Uh, I, that's I, I grew out of that phase. Well, we do. A few I weeks think... ago? Or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yesterday. I sold oh. my last fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I would have kept them all. I mean, I'm not sure it's a good thing that we, that we, that we do make ourselves grow out of those phases and i've tried not i was to, never i was know. never a, an animal or an inanimate object no but you are you you are you're very very closely tied to all the objects and things from your childhood oh yeah i have and, that's my and serotonin you spent a lot of time kind of rediscovering them like your oh well, i think a lot of us the do monster nostalgia thing. what was the the monster mighty man and Mon Make mighty man and monster maker if you have one send it to me <laughs> there you go <laughs> favorite childhood uh, toy it was like the barbie fashion plates do you know what this is david no too young for this uh there were uh, uh these plates there were three sets of plates so there was the bottom half that like barbie you know she had like a skirt and then there was a pair of pants and there was a you know flowy pair of pants oh, like and mix and match or whatever and then there's a midsection and there was a head you know well like the boys and creepy kids uh version of that <laughs> was mighty men and monster maker and each section was like you know you had like tentacles and there were robot legs and um you know just uh, uh, monster heads different monster heads and then you would put the plates on and they were like embossed you know you put the paper over it and you take the little black crayon and you rub over it so you create all these monsters by virtue of switching out the plates and then you color in your creation and that was the greatest toy that has ever existed it sounds fantastic and and when did you part company i don't it? know uh, i don't know but i want uh i want a complete they're the heads always got lost they're very small uh, so most of the sets that you see uh there's like a plate but you've like never, a head plate you've missing. searched i'm sure that dude we were talking to who owns the toy store in north carolina S said he had one. Oh, I don't know if you're just saying you think that. that was just bribery and corruption to get us down there. I don't know. If you're uh, listening, show it to me. <laughs> <laughs> show us the money. <laughs> show me the. <laughs> show me the mighty men and monster maker. Mm -hmm. Um, but generally, you do and like TV and and. I was a spy a lot. Ah, We're, oh, We're a I like that. Hiding behind cow. Me and my friends, you know, my like my grandmother lived in an apartment building at one point we would always like you know prowl around the halls and act like we were you know we weren't actually like prowling prowling or we little kids like listening to conversations through you know doors and things like that do you so have I, any part of a I, conversation you remember try not really but like you know when we go grocery shopping with our mothers we like you know go away and then try to like creep close to them without us seeing or spy on them around the other you know, aisle, stupid shit like that. You know. Well, I, I am. Um, I used to get a comic a called spy. TV Twenty One in the UK, which was very kind of uh, tied to the to the Jerry Anderson series, I don't know what that uh, is. Um, Thunderbirds and ah. Fireball XL Five and Supercar and so forth. And I was a secret agent. You could join up and become a secret yeah, I think agent. All kids and they sent spies. they sent you, you know, your agent thing with a photograph on it and yeah. a secret password and a, a thing for how to. Did you have break. fingerprint? They send you messages in codes and the finger finger kit. That was yes. like yes, that was the OG spy toy. It's the fingerprint the kit. The OG original. Oh, you didn't know that? No. OG. OG. You learned something new. I did. That's old though. It's OG. It didn't, I was going to say it's very That's the OG. You, but it's not. Very, no, it's no, it's like embarrassing. I would embarrass my kids if I said that. OG. It's the OG. Right. Okay. Yeah. Hey, it's the OG. But you wanted to be a paranormal investigator, and I did too to I some did. degree. And I, I can remember my grandma would take us bowling, this bowling alley, 
and you know the other grandchildren we would hang out and we would go down this one dark hallway and we would look into oh, the rooms in the hallway right. and we started a rumor that dracula would live down at the end <laughs> and we dare each other to go to the to the end of the, the hallway and we'd look for things in the rooms and ghosts and yeah so i think i think spies and spies and ghost hunters and was probably a common hunters. thing for kids i would imagine well, and I think I've said on on here before, when we've been talking to Steve Gonzalez and uh, Dave Schrader, particularly, I, I suspect um, that that one of the things that kind of uh, piqued my interest in all of that was um, a book that I had out of the library when I was a boy about Borley Rectory, written mm. by Harry Price. Um, put put the picture of Harry Price up on the screen. If we can, David, take a look at him. Who uh, was the there we are. known paranormal investigator in 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 the UK? I I was terrified of ghosts when I was a little boy. Um, never seen one. Uh, still never have. Um, uh, but they've seen you. Well, if they exist, they have. I'm still not convinced of this. Um, uh, I, terrified of them, but I couldn't get enough of them. There's Harry Price. And the book was uh, The Most Haunted House in England. Uh, Ten Years Investigating Borley Rectory, um, written by uh, Harry Pr Price. And I found a reprint of that original book um, on Amazon, much to my surprise. So I bought that. And at the same time, I bought um, the second book that uh, Harry Price wrote called The End of Borley Rectory, and then also uh, a book written by Paul Adams, Eddie Brazil, and Peter Underwood called The Borley Rectory Companion. And it's an interesting story. Um, put, put, the, uh, put the black and white picture of Borley Rectory Oof. Uh, up on screen. Nope, um, not that one. Ah, there it is. Uh, this, was, uh, this is in uh, Borley. B-O-R-L-E-Y, which is in Essex in England. Um, a rector is like uh, an administrative leader. We're talking about the Church of England um, now, not, not the Catholic Church, like, um, you know, vicars and all that stuff. Parish notices, indeed. <laughs> um, uh, so it was built in 1862, but it, it was built on... Doesn't that look lovely? How English does that look? Mm. Um, Quite. With a with a croquet lawn in the beginning, in the beginning, in the foreground. Well, it's kind of the beginning, the beginning of the picture, uh, as you look at it. Anybody played croquet? No. I have. It's something Disney characters do. Well, like flamingos. They do it. Well, it's because it's in and in Alice that movie, in Heather's. It's in Alice in Wonderland. It's not yeah. Disney's idea. Um, Heather's. They play you've croquet. Never, you've never seen Heather's? It's quite a cool game, actually. Very English. I have yeah, I mean, I think it. everybody just associates it with the, you know, this is what people in England do. They play this, when they're this not game. Drinking tea and eating cucumber sandwiches. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it, it was built on the site of much older rectories. So it has a long history. Um, and there were uh, paranormal reports coming out of the house from very early on, as early as 1863, reports of unexplained footsteps. Um, around the turn of the century, four daughters of the then rector reported seeing the ghost of a nun in the grounds of, uh, of the rectory. Uh, but it, it's the full nine yards, it, a, a, phantom, a phantom coach driven by not one, but two headless horsemen, if you will. Um, no no self-respecting horseman uh, is ever seen with a head on his shoulders, it seems to me. Um, uh, in 1920, the rector's wife reported discovering uh, a package containing what turned out to be a young woman's skull. Um, and there was a big uptick in activity in the 1920s going into the 1930s, um, which culminated in the Daily Mail in the United Kingdom which for um, any UK viewers, back in the day, the Daily Mail, I know it's hard to believe these days, but the Daily Mail 
was actually a respectable newspaper. Um, they uh, they uh, arranged for Harry Price to go to Borley Rectory to investigate, and it's those investigations that formed the basis of um, his first book on the subject of Borley Rectory. Um, the end of Borley Rectory, his second book, uh, is written specifically around the fact um, that in the late 1930s, you put the put the color picture up now, David. Um, uh, I believe I believe it was a new rector who was moving in, um, was unpacking cases in in the halls of the rectory um, when he knocked over either um, a lantern or candles and set fire to the place. Um, have you have you got that color image, David? Yeah, it's up. It just oh. takes a second. I can't see it yet, but anyway, uh, see, yes. So, as a consequence, that's what Baldy Rectory ended up looking like, um, burnt pretty much to a shell. The story takes a further twist uh, because when Harry Price died, which I think was in the late 1940s, there were immediately. Uh, accusations that he'd invented the whole thing um, and it was the full nine yards it was writing right hand, handwritten messages appearing on the walls objects being thrown around uh, unexplained footsteps the the ghost of the nun was seen again other apparitions people being hit by objects almost immediately there were accusations that he'd staged the whole thing and he'd invented the whole thing um, and that he was uh, a charlatan. I don't. I don't think those accusations have ever been um, fully proven. There, there were then. Uh, I, th I think a couple of earlier occupants of the rectory who kind of said, "Oh, it was haunted. It's news to me. We we never heard anything." Mm. Um, and, and one guy claimed that he was. He was hit by a stone when he was walking through Borley Rectory uh, with Harry Price uh, and subsequently discovered that Harry Price had had uh, lots of pebbles in the pocket of his ah. overcoat. Which he, he, would, mm -hmm. he would throw at people when, uh, when they weren't looking. And I love this as well. One of, one of the rector's wives, of course, it has to come down to sex. One of, one of, the, uh, one of the rector's wives, Marianne Foister, which is odd because uh, a lot of the messages, and I'm going from my memory from childhood written on the wall, were either to or from someone called Marianne. She said that, <laughs> that she had, um, she'd invented a lot of the paranormal activity um, to cover up the fact that she was having uh, a torrid affair with the lodger. Nice. <laughs> and again, that's such a very English thing to be to be having a bit of how's your father with the <laughs> with 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 the lodger. I'm not quite sure how you cover up having an affair by inventing paranormal activity. Well, I mean, that's what you're. Did you see that? Quick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, that's what you're blaming the noises on, right? It's obviously uh, poltergeist uh, you've heard. Uh, what is that noise? Oh, oh, oh definitely oh, haunted. It's, it's, the ghost. It's, it's the headless nun. <laughs> <laughs> she always comes uh, around uh, hey, this oh. time of night. Um, so uh, I've, I've, because of talking about it, it's kind of kicked up all my interest um, in it again. So I've, I've bought those three books that I will be working my way through, and then maybe we'll we'll revisit all of that but but I, I i think it's it's almost like a complete thing because it's you know it's a bit it's a bit amityville and it's very english and it's headless horsemen and ghosts of nuns uh handwritten messages appearing on walls and possibly a charlatan because you know of course a charlatan of course a charlatan even if there's a real haunting there's going to be a charlatan involved and sex possibly ghost sex not necessarily at the same time um <laughs> uh so 
uh, and it's also it's also recently um, uh, inspired a couple of movies, which to my shame I have not seen. So I will catch up with those as well. Uh, like, well, uh, one was simply called uh, Bali Rectory in 2017, which starred Reese Shearsmith. Um, anyone who knows the comedy series, brilliant comedy series from the UK called The League of Gentlemen. No? I've heard of it. I've never right. seen it. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, uh, and Reese was in The Village with me. Okay. Uh, very funny uh, horror movie, comedy horror uh, movie that I'm in very briefly with uh, Reese and uh last year the ghosts of Bawley rectory with a slightly alarming cast julian sands oh toya wilcox no idea a name that will ring a bell with uh, again anyone watching in the uk of a certain age and uh, colin baker who was a oh we were in a car with him one time were we yes where? Wasn't he a Doctor Who? He was a Doctor he was. Who. I don't. Well, you're asking me to remember where we were. Oh, okay. No, because oh, I remember because you. I'm pretty certain you told me that. Maybe right. I'm getting oh. Doctor Who's mixed up. Do you know? There, like, do you know that? Well, yeah, I had that, I had that Doctor Who in the back of my cab. The other day. <laughs> I have had it. I did, well, the car no longer exists. My first car, I had a Doctor Who in the in the in the back of my car but that was peter nice davidson not colin baker when i did my audio end of the pier thing uh doctor who colin was the doctor how nice for him well i, I like to think it, <laughs> the movie i like to think it might have been is called is, i told you the ghost of Baldy rector i had forgotten julian Sands already to <laughs> colin baker so um i'll read those books and look at those films and then maybe we'll We'll revisit, but that that was. This has all been. What the what the fuck time is it? It's not. This has been. I nearly, don't think we've, we've barely talked about ghosts. It, well, this has been a, a kind of one hour preamble to uh, honestly, to, yes, um, <laughs> to the fact that um, as Steph had suggested that we maybe we should talk about we could talk about ghosts and the paranormal. Uh, I have no objection to this idea, so I'll shut up now. No, you don't have to shut up. Okay, we should just you know do what we're um, but, uh, but, do uh, you know I thought it was. Uh, <laughs> coincidental that i'd ordered those three books um from the evil empire that is amazon uh but it's an awfully awfully convenient evil empire um well there's one bookstore around now last night here's here's a book you want to get a book i heard of a thing i don't know whether there's an equivalent over here but there, there is a there's a that's what to have there's a there's a site in the uk called I think it's called bookshop.com, which sources from independent bookshops and uses their money to help subsidize independent bookshops. Look at that. There's a big fat book That's, full of um, ghosts. By Hans Holzer. Ah. Uh, and if anyone was watching the uh, the Dave Schrader episode, of course, Dave uh, presents uh the holster files on the travel channel um so is he edited that or did he put the whole uh, thing together i think himself? he put the whole thing together so that I mean, is with kind writings of like by him yes the holster files um holster files basically then what's uh, your favorite haunting you my favorite one? haunting well the, there was a series of books um there was a series of books uh with monsters and I'm, I'm talking back into the elementary school days if anyone my age ish remembers that they were they were like uh orange and black covers and you had like godzilla um you know some kind of i don't know necessarily if it was frankenstein's monster but the series of you know monsters and creatures bigfoot i remember one specifically um loch ness monster so it sort of started with a series like that and then more specifically, there was a series of like mysterious occurrences. And I would always take those books out of uh, the school library. But I always remember uh, two, two stories in particular. There was Berkeley Square. 
Bob. Berkeley or Bob. Berkeley. No, here's the thing. There's, a, I, I can't remember. In London? I think there was a Berkeley Square in New York also. Oh, well, and then there was possibly. a Berkeley Square. If a nightingale sang in it, it's Berkeley Square in London. Right. But it was a, a, Berkeley. a specific uh, apartment building. Mm. And I always had it pictured in my head and I think of it now and I can picture exactly there. I don't believe there was actually a picture of the inside. It's just the image I had in my head that my head had created of this story and what had happened in this story. So it's like I have a picture of the room, although the room was never in the book, but it was always the story. And it was a, just a picture of the outside of the building. It was like a very plain brown sort of brick apartment building very you know nothing too fancy but it that really stuck with me and it was about people who would stop there and you know their legs would get grabbed or they would get smacked or their covers would get pulled off and it just like scared the shit out of me um and that's the that's the well, probably one of my favorites for that reason because it was like the first thing that grabbed me that and the uh is it the brown lady the lady of brown house the very famous picture of a full like a full body ghost on the floating steps. down the steps yes and that was just like the yes. most awesome thing i'd ever seen yes you know and um, I, I can't remember offhand now it's probably in the big fat book mm. um uh as to whether that was ever See, proven to be a crispy one says not. i read those orange ones all the time yep oh, wow. i would love huh. to get a collect that collection um back in my hands and mm. and and i was going to say actually actually i mean i've never seen a ghost you've never seen a ghost this, um, this was the other set i only have one because i'm trying to collect the set but uh Mysteries of the Unknown. This is a Time Life, Time Life books collection. Oh. Mysteries of the Unknown. So this was like Mind a, a whole, a whole, whole series about weird shit. Yeah. Like a whole mm -hmm. library you could collect. Mm -hmm. so there was hauntings and stuff in there. Like, like the Time Supernatural Life. Supernatural stuff. Yeah. So like your like the Time Life records. CD collections. Book. Yeah. Cool. So Berkeley Square and the the Brown Lady are definitely mm. the ones that grab me. Probably that and I think solidified my interest in the, the concept of the haunted house as opposed to anything else, you know? The, the, yes, the old not, dark not a, house. Yeah, not not necessarily a haunted battlefield. I, or... You've never shown me this before. I don't think. I think so. I think Much we found than. it at an antique shop. I was very excited. But it's, it. it's mostly poltergeist activity or hearing things mm -hmm. or. Um... No, I've never seen anything. Thank God. I mean, I want to, but I don't want to. Your eyes would water. That would heck, they'd do more than water. <laughs> <laughs> and David had a ghost that wanted to watch wrestling all the time. Yeah, that ghost decided to leave. Did it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you let it watch? I took your advice. I let the episode finish and it never came back. There you go. Happy ghost. Yep. Weird. So what, what was that again? You It kept coming on? Yeah, like the same time every night, it would the Apple TV would turn itself on, mm -hmm. and it would go back to the same starting point of the episode, which was like an hour and ten minutes in. All right, and wrestling. Mm. Yeah, it was it was about the Undertaker. Right. <laughs> See, yeah, and I told you let it play, let the ghost watch. It it obviously wanted to watch the documentary. It was a three week ordeal. It, it would happen three or four times a week. It would actually like turn on by itself and then took your advice no issues see i'm a i'm a fucking professional now i am <laughs> i have exercised I'm, a ghost i'm i'm having a i'm i'm having a <laughs> i'm having a moment i i'm sensing the presence of a can of ginger <laughs> ale just behind that door oh my god that's that's isn't incredible. that amazing how did you do that i don't know i just i suddenly I suddenly felt <laughs> as though I could, I could feel the ginger. I'm very thirsty. I didn't bring a drink down mm. with me, and I knew that was in there. You see, it's all. I have a beer mug fraudulent. full of iced coffee. And I, I also part of the reason why I, I like the idea of Harry Price having fake things, if indeed he did, 
um, that I quite like that. I quite like, you know, the whole Houdini thing and all the, the you know, the the table wrappers and that's so much fun the, that book you got me the seance thing is so right. it's so cool uh, the, 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 the cheese cloth being the cheese, cheese cheese cloth. Cloth so i love those images mouth. um and I, I you know it's again it goes back to theater and movies and performance and sleight of hand and stage magic and so forth um but if you can convincingly pull off all those things you know you have people secreted around the room Talking through the, <laughs> all of that. You know what I love it was the and automatic writers. Those women would all dramatic feet were and attached to it. all kinds of strings. They could they could pull a string that would ring right. a bell and you know yeah. brilliant stuff. Uh so um you know I I don't I'm I'm not averse to a bit of fakery here and there as well. It's like Amityville, um, you know, that yes. Which holds I'm sorry. We talk about I, that. I Dave, think it's I think it's fake as hell, but I still love it. I absolutely mm. love it. I love reading about it. I love the movie. The movie still scares the shit out of me. Um, I mean, obviously, what happened initially, and yeah, that makes my eyes water. No, <laughs> fucking Jody. Jody. <laughs> oh, I get, look, look. I'm starting to get teary. <laughs> you know, Amityville, right, David? David. 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 Yes. Oh. oh. Yeah. There he is. I, I thought, thought Jody he, took you. Abducted. You know Amityville, right? Yes. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't Jody freak you the fuck out? Yeah. Ugh. No. When the mother looks through the door and she sees the rocking yeah. chair. Yes. Oh, that's one of the scariest fucking things ever. They um they ripped it off in paranormal activity. They ripped it. I was out. just gonna say that. Yeah. Um, those movies ripped everything off. Well, I, I will say though, the newest one, Next of Kin, Chef's oh. Kiss, unbelievable. Really? really? Yeah. It was. It was like, take whatever you know about the first four, first right. six for that matter, throw it out the window, and this new one, like, it, it was a great watch. Really? I would not uh, have. At least we watched uh, them as a joke. We did. Well, I thought actually, they were so bad. The the one with the kids. Oh, where the kids the, got the, tossed. The girls in the bedroom. That was that, that was pretty that was freaky. Okay. Well, that Some moment that at right. least was effective. Yeah. What about the kitchen when all the plates fell. Yeah, well, you yeah. can't you can't lose with that, you know, and the swinging chandeliers and all the rest of it. It's you know, it, it even though oh oh see there we go talk about Here. Jody again. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I just dropped something. Carry on, well, carry you, on. You like to think you did. Um, it's like you know the the most beautiful sound in the world is the sound of children's laughter unless it's three o'clock in the morning and you don't have any children <laughs> love that uh um what were we talking about jody jody and paranormal activity yes, paranormal yeah we just you we we just well, took, we watched the one the, and the it, rip out of the first movie it, it, honest effort on our what, part what are the names? Mika, and, mika and katie oh god remember and, that Mika, Mika, <laughs> and the um, the, the fucking standing was, over each other, the, and the the demon hunter. Oh, this there's was, this house is festooned no, with was, demons. Good luck. I can't stay. I can't Bye. stay here. Yes, <laughs> but you should stay <laughs> another night. You should night. stay another night. Yeah. <laughs> Ta-da! Paranormal activity. The one point of which that I thought that was going to turn out to be good was discovering the photograph in the crawl space in the um in the attic or whatever it was and the when they put the flower down on the floor and the foot it left the footprints now you know we need to watch thing. uh but then it just you know when you're done write this down so you remember look up Who, owl kitty me? not you oh people listening i've shown oh. you i've shown you owl kitty owl kitty's yes. paranormal activity <laughs> The dude that puts his cat into all these movies. Have you seen that, David? No, but it sounds incredible. God. It is, it oh, is he, superb. And he it goes, uh, he's he really goes for it. He has green screen and everything for the it's cat. So like brilliantly he, done. His yeah. his Titanic is 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 yeah, it's good stuff. Is more epic than the original movie yeah. and very funny. But the paranormal activity one was hilarious. And uh I mean that that's what I found ridiculous, like the staring, the standing over and 
I mean, that's spooky and unsettling. It's a spooky, but it's a spooky idea, especially if you're going to do it for that long. Like if I woke up and you're standing there staring at me like that, I'd probably kick you. <laughs> Would you kill me? <laughs> with, with justification, I believe. <laughs> But that was spooky. Um, so, but it, so but you could what, you can only number, carry that what, on for so long, though. What number is that, David? Next of kin? Uh, like seven. <laughs> seven. Yeah. Wow. So it was one, two, three, four. Then there was like ghost dimension, the marked ones. Then next of kin. We're really next behind. They're completely like this one's unrelated. I mean, obviously found. I, I wouldn't even really say found footage, I guess, but yeah. just uh, yeah, it's it's. I, do. I had no hopes going into it because my friend was like, "You should watch it. It's it's completely different." And I was like, Flex. "It doesn't do it for me." And then I watched it, and I was like, "Oh man, would watch is again." It on, is it on Netflix? No, I watched it on Paramount Plus. Oh, we do we have that? We do. All right. I will look for it. It's all yeah. No Blair Witch. Hey. Project. Scared the crap out of me. <sighs> no idea why it because it was terrifying woods man woods are scary yeah woods are creepy uh -uh. Yeah, i grew are, up yes. playing in the woods and there yeah, were moments of like intense joy in the woods I and see anything and terrible scary about fear. staring up some chick's snotty nostril for because it was real ugly crying it wasn't real ugly crying it was acting well it was good acting <laughs> Um, and you know, it's, when, it's a good, a good old ugly cry. They're in the tent. I, you, you know, know women it's members know of the crew like. outside banging on the no, walls. No, they didn't. Of the tent. Apparently, no. Oh my God. Well, you. So, so what? It was, it was really haunted. No, I'm what? saying they didn't know that the the crew was going to do that. The actors didn't. Yeah, they, they thought didn't. it was ghosts. They witches. didn't think it was ghosts, but they were scared because they didn't know what the fuck was going on. But you would have known. The first thing you'd have said as an hey, actor would be, "Hey." hey Jim, so stop doing that. Wait a second. That. So what? So what? That's the technique they use well, for the movie. It's acting. It's you know. Okay. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it just kind of <laughs> undercut the whole thing. I don't for me. think so at all. It did, because um, I came to it quite late, and there had been so much fuss about it, and I was kind of waiting to we find saw, out like, the first why. Night it came out. Um, and. Uh, when when they get into the house or he gets into the house and he's running up the steps and you can hear the noises somewhere off and the the black kids handprints are on the wall spooky i thought wow uh i feel very unsettled at the moment and i don't know where this is going and i'm not sure i like it and maybe i'm about to find out what all the fuss was Oh, those are the credits. So I guess that's the end of the movie. Yeah, I loved it. Scary. Huge. Scared letdown, the shit out of me. I thought. And and there are not many movies that I could say actually scare me. Hmm. Grudge scares me. I think the remake more than than the uh, believe it or not the original. The American remake. Yeah. Huh. Which I thought was good. That fucking sound. <laughs> that sound. Well, that's why I had that. I had an airbrush shop at that time, and my compressor was all the way down in the basement, which was a nasty old Pittsburgh basement. And I could not go down in the basement, so my compressor stayed on for like a fucking week because I could not bear to go in the. I was convinced that thing was down there. Like I said, thought if I go down there and I hear that noise, I will die, and no one will find me. <laughs> <laughs> so i didn't my compressor stayed on you just you you, you had to go downstairs to just shut my compressor off and on and uh, you wouldn't do it mm -mm. No. nope but anyway that scared me and blair witch scared me and amityville still spooks me a bit yeah well and, and that's really yeah i don't do. think anything think actually any, scared me any haunted house movie gets you i think oh how can i leave out the shining there you go the not twins. not the shining sorry not the shining the changeling the change brain fart the changeling george c scott and the innocence for yes me, no uh, uh directed by jack clayton 1962 black and white movie with deborah carr based on the turn of the screw brilliant movie see people agree with you good 
I was so excited. Stephanie said I was so excited to see it as a kid. Oh, Blair Witch. But I was so confused at the end. Great imagery. But yeah, I agree with that. Well, maybe that's because you were young. Like when Me? you say kid. No. No. The, I uh, wasn't. No, not you. Stephanie, who said that. Uh, but Mark. Did oh, Tales from the Dark Side. We watched some of those, I think. Did, so when you say the audience reaction was amazing mark do you mean mixed or all scared non-scared mixture george says i saw it in nearly empty cinema at 2 p.m scared shitless yeah i don't know i just think because i always since i was you know a very small kid i i grew up playing in the woods we grew up on the edge of the woods and I would run through the woods to get to my friend's house. And sometimes I'd start out walking and then I would sprint. And then I'd be a full paced run because it, there was just something spooky about being in the woods on your own, even though I'd walked them, you know, hundreds of times. It's something that just always seemed kind of otherworldly about the woods. What, what was that documentary I did an interview for about 80s? horror into the darkness into the darkness i think and i talked there about how uh nature mother nature in america is a darker more sinister place uh, entity than mother nature in england mm. uh the the natural world in england the english countryside is generally speaking a rather gentle place and i don't think i found woods in in mm. the uk scary that's partly because there simply aren't so many animals that are prepared to kill you in <laughs> in the united kingdom <laughs> right in fact there's almost none we uh we killed the last wolf in england several hundred years ago mm. and we've never brought them back we don't have bears no we don't deer. have coyotes well, deer who are very spooky creatures but they can't they won't kill you they no are well they spooky. can kill they are you ghosts. they can kick the fuck out of you well yeah they are if you get but you'll never get close enough i mean unless you're in the car unless you're in yeah. car. <laughs> western um, pa yeah but they are they ghosts. are spooky they, they are, are very ghosts. spooky they, they just i've walked almost even just down here by the railway lines mm -hmm. and i walking along and i've looked up and there's two of them mm -hmm. just standing Stare on the other side you. of the railway staring. Yeah. Well, and then particularly if you're in kind of twilight half light, mm -hmm. they they go and you can't see you them. You can't hear them. You Cannot can't see, see them. them. No, but it's um, not just the animals. You just... I always, what, what I was going to say was mm. as, as well that I, I, I had a perception coming. And I know it's a silly thing to say, but I had a perception the first, I first came to the States in 1989, visiting the, the, the States, and then a lot afterwards, and I did a lot of appearances at haunted houses and so forth. So I was in a lot of states. It wasn't, you know, I think I'd, I'd been in 33 states uh, of the Union now, and I hit most of those quite early on. I had the, obviously, the United States of America, by comparison with countries in Europe, is very young nearly 250 years old, 200, 246, is it, I think? I um, speak numbers to me. Uh, you know, whereas European countries are 1,000, 2,000 mm -hmm. years old. Now, I always had a perception of America as a young country, a young nation in an old country. Mm. And I know it's silly because obviously America is not any older than the United Kingdom. It's all on the same planet, duh. But it felt older and darker. And I think it's also because there's almost no public land in America. There's no, a lot everything, of uh, everybody land. owns and there's everything is owned by someone. Yes. Yeah. So everything is is you're trespassing. You just get out. Yeah. Keep out. Yes. Don't go here. Yeah. Don't be here. You can't just pull up um, on the woods somewhere and go. Oh, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'll go. Pull over here and there take are, a walk in these here woods. Everywhere you go in the English countryside, there are footpaths, mm -hmm. signposted, and they'll Wonderful. take you across farmland and through woods, and you nobody has the right to wow. stop you doing that. Nobody. 
uh, and it's fiercely guarded and protected. But, I think I remember being uh, um, surprised in the way that we walked just very freely into these areas that were when we were you ha you have to tell me where we were because I don't know when we when we were uh, on our way to Stonehenge and we stopped at West West Kennet the the burial uh, the we and, West yeah. Kennet Long Barrow yes uh, by Silbury Hill yes yep. yes and, and when we went to Stonehenge we walked up we walked up through the fields up up the hill uh, at the back there we sure did we did um and but that's we weren't trespassing on no, anybody's that's land the, that's even the though thing it was that farmland surprised it, me it, it was, was like footpath. this 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 historic this historic you know thing here that you mm. could just walk right into and up to and and you know i'm waiting for somebody to come yelling at us you're, well, you're trespassing is even more so uh stonehenge is is much more restricted access and you can't actually get in to the stone well not necessarily stonehenge but the uh the, but the burial Ave, site avebury mm -hmm. well west Kennet long oh we avebury is where the it. people were buzzing holding well, they the were stones buzzing. They were, yes we Ave, avebury is a remarkable that was incredible. it's another stone circle but it's huge it's much much bigger than stonehenge mm -hmm. which but you can't tell because it is so much it bigger is so, so spread you can't out even tell it's a circle mm -hmm. it's, it's the shock when you see stonehenge for the first time I'm sure you probably thought like, so. Oh, wow. It's I thought so this was small. a lot bigger. It's yeah. It's tiny. It but, is. Uh, Avery is huge. And then Clark Griswold um, backs into it and knocks the whole fucking thing over. And, and it's so big that the village is partly built inside um, the stone mm -hmm. circle. And then there's a long uh, avenue that went up to a, what was another henge mm -hmm. um, up on a, uh, one of, one of the, the nearby chalk. hills. It was chalk. Stefan and I were walking, walking <laughs> around Avery. Weren't we sitting at one point? We're just and kind we, of chilling. We hear, sitting? we hear. Mm. Like, what the fuck is that? What is that? Is that, is that it, bees? Is there like a swarm of bees? It must be. Maybe they're African killer bees. And we walk towards it and we hear. Mm. What year was that? I could find that picture right now. Uh, oh, you probably can. Jesus, that would be about 2010. A bit later, maybe. 2010. 11, I'll keep talking. 12, I'll try to find it. Something like that. Um, <laughs> and we we approached, and here's here's I'm sure I have little doubt that they were probably American. Standing no. standing around one of the stones. Um, were they holding hands or were they touching? No, they the were stone? holding the stones. They were holding touching the, the stone stones and humming. Yeah, it was friggin' hilarious. Mm. Oh, this is, uh, this is to feel the oh, vibration. Oh my god, like, I cannot da, da, da. believe I fucking found it that quick. Send it to David. I'm sending it to you, David. <laughs> <laughs> it's not shown anybody's faces. No. Uh, it's so the innocent have been protected, though God yeah. knows they have no right to be. <laughs> That's a great picture. Send, can I send that one to him too? Is, That's the top of West Canada. Oh, West Canada. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing too, walking in there and where you know there were dead bodies, it did not feel creeped out at all. No, well, it's it's Nothing. a wonderful. I I visited West Kennet with uh, with Gunnar Hansen. Mm. Uh, we had a wonderful day. And there's you um, walking in uh, a crop today. circle. There you go. Send that one as well. Yeah, that's a nice picture. That one. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a West Kennet long barrow. Well, it, there were never any dead bodies. Oh, wow. in, oh no, I thought it, there were certainly. Um, I thought that was the point of it, no? Well, but almost certainly what they did was they they did sky burials, not unlike a ah, lot of Tibetan. Native Americans and, and yeah. the Tibetans mm -hmm. and the Zoroastrians, uh, I believe, uh, did this as well. You can start putting those pictures up when you've got them and you feel ready, David. Um, so they would suspend them in the air and let the birds and Eat them. the insects they take their spirit take, up take, to the sky. Well, it's sensible because it takes all the soft tissue off it. So there's nothing to rot and stink. Yeah. And then when when that's done, they would collect um, the bones mm -hmm. and take them into the long barrow. Therefore, you can get an awful lot of people right. into a small space because right. it's effectively Well, that's like the ossuary. ossuaries, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I think I sent the crop one a few times accidentally. 
Did you get those? Uh, am I waiting for more or just three? Uh, just It'll just be three. Okay. Yeah, I got them all. You got the rocks. You got the people on the rock. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a photo. When what, what year was that? I didn't even look at the year. It was July 2011. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I can't see what's coming. Oh, are we putting them up, David? Yeah. It'll yeah. Come up. Uh, they're so being emailed right now. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I should pay attention to chat a little bit, huh? Hills have eyes stuff over here in the US. <laughs> yeah jersey devil or bogey creek it wasn't yeah i don't remember bogey creek that well i mean they made it into a movie was it was it a thing before the movie or did the movie I make did. it into a, a legend bogey creek yeah i don't know anything about bogey creek um well, that's sort of a lot of the, the, the crypto is, cryptozoology the like, jersey devil i was always reading stories about uh, i have a book on the jersey devil and um uh, the Mothman, uh, but, but and and again, I think that's an American thing. We don't we don't really so much have those equivalents in the UK. As far as I know, there's never been a Bigfoot in the, in the UK. UK. Isn't that um, weird? I wonder why. Well, part of the reason is um, oh, you there's think... there's me in a crop circle. It was a legit crop circle, it and was. you were really not even phased by it. <laughs> it wasn't. Well, because like people are always in you know faking crop circles yeah and, but, who but cares? That was, of course it's fake you that know, actually... was right next to west Kennet. yeah right next to the we're just walking and i'm like we're, we're walking in like a fucking crop circle and he doesn't seem phased by it it's a crop circle well, i know people yeah. make them yeah and i i don't believe that aliens <laughs> land and create these you know no. designs but it's, it was impressive and it was cool you know when are you going to get to walk in a crop circle is, is that the first one that's gone up david or is that have we had the others? It oh, should be are. switching. Yeah. So that's um that's me standing over the entrance to the long barrow. So on the on the right are standing stones which kind of uh, marked the the doorway. So you go in behind those stones and then right underneath where I'm standing, you go in uh, inside uh, the long barrow. Yeah, you just go in and poke around and uh come but it's out crazy again. you're just free to walk around and, and... silbury hill which is which is a man-made hill uh made by the same people and around the same time as the long barrow and Avebury and uh stonehenge and it's it's basically england's ziggurat um that now you don't have access to because it was getting a road you could climb to the top of it but, mm. um they've stopped that now because it was getting badly eroded let's see the people let's see the weirdos so many people were the going cult. the cult there yeah you go. look at that <laughs> that's great so they're all they were and, and they're all just standing there I going call them weirdos mm. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if they had like a timer on like okay everyone Five minutes of humming. They don't look Start American now. to me. I, I think they're very definitely English. <laughs> but but there's woods there. Yeah. It's yes, woods. but it's it's, it's a different kind of woods. Your woods aren't well, spooky. Well, what I was going to say was, uh, uh, the the United Kingdom was once entirely forested, mm -hmm. nothing but forest. We actually deforested thousands of years ago. The forests were cleared mm. um, and you know burnt and and turned into farmland which is the reason that the english countryside is you know gently rolling green because and lambs the trees have taken away if you if you leave everything mm. um eventually of course the forest will reclaim it yeah um and it's a it's a much much smaller country yes um it's, oh, you'll, it's not really possible the odds to, of you getting lost and dying in the woods yes, here are, are high very you know? done. Yes. I, mean, I was freaked out when i when i was first over here we went to kentucky to monster mania it, it was going oh. to going to monster mania um which is just outside philadelphia and we drove um and just driving for six hours in a straight line 
and realizing I hadn't left the state <laughs> and driven for six hours and still in Pen Pennsylvania. I know it's a very English thing to find that odd, um, you know, and I hear Texans laughing even as, <laughs> as, as I speak. Um, but if, if, you, if you drive in a straight line in any direction for six hours in the United Kingdom, you're probably in the sea, whichever, whichever direction um, uh, you choose to go in. Um, and, you know, you drive across Pennsylvania and you, and you go up over the Laurel Highlands heading towards Harrisburg and for as far as you can see, it's just Woods. hills and trees, yeah. trees, trees, trees and trees, yeah. where until very, very recently, no human being set foot. Yeah. But but those woods are still owned by someone. Well, they are they are now. So you can't just yes. say, I'm gonna go yes. explore. But you that look, area you look over around there. at all of that and you think, well, of course a Bigfoot could be in there. And how the hell would yes. anybody know? Well, we it? have Western Pennsylvania has like the largest number of Bigfoot sightings, sightings. Of, of anywhere. I'm not a believer in much in term in 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 the cryptozoology world, but um, I believe in the big feet. I do believe in the big feet. The big feats are out there. Yes, definitely. Not so much aliens. Um, but I. But again, I, I think that's part of the reason why the forest is more threatening it's as mysterious. a concept in America, it's, because you can walk into it and never come out. Yes, and it's much like the ocean, because there's still shit in, in forests all over that we've never seen yet. Well, like in when, every time scientists set foot. Like a new in, species in the rainforest frog. in South America, they, they discover another yeah. nine species yeah. of frog. Yeah. Maybe, so what else you know. is there? You know, yeah. it's like the ocean. You know, how much of the ocean is yet undiscovered? You know, and the ocean well, spooky as hell too. We know more about our solar system than we do, than we about, do about the, the ocean. Oceans. Yeah. And we're destroying it before we have a chance to know it. But that looks, you know, traveling in, into the ocean and, and people dive in these these deep diving suits. I mean, that looks just about as spooky as venturing into the dark woods somewhere. Uh, without question, without question. Yeah. Um, yeah. And skunk ape, yeah, in Florida, right? Is is skunk ape the smaller ones in Florida with the with the light colored fur? I know there are different. There are kind of. Local I don't think it's there. a real thing. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Well, it's, it's Florida's a... Bigfoot, though, isn't it? Oh, right, there, there right, right, right. Yeah, local variations there are regional on, on big, big feet. Yeah, there's the like, uh, uh, um, God, what's the one? It's one out of my head. Some type of swamp thing, or is that that is probably the legend of Bogey Creek, right? That's oh, the Bigfoot thing, swamp thing, right? Oh, is it? No, not not necessarily swamp thing. Is it Bogey Creek or Boggy Creek? Boggy Creek, Bogey Creek. <laughs> the big feats have been sighted up here in New York as well. There you go. <laughs> In the city, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most likely. That's where I'd go. Mark says, "Doug, I literally live Chupacabra. right next uh. door to Big Cypress Swamp, Randolph Carter Country, and you can walk, hike in there. And if one dares, going where things that could kill you wander." Yes. Mm. Well, I yeah, I mean, there are such places. I you know, there's the Appalachian Trail, which I I kind of harbored thoughts of people will get you up there and be more afraid of them than the creatures dueling banjo <laughs> yeah sure yep it. yep yep cubacabra sure pretty mouth. i don't know the cubacabra thing it always ends up being something with mange you know like a bear with mange boggy as in bog oh that makes sense dog boggy, yeah yes. bog boggy yes okay now is that like a bigfoot or a swamp thing or like a hybrid Boggy Creek. I think that's the one I, I read about most. Uh, besides hauntings, was was probably Bigfoot. The Loch Ness monster. Loch Ness was, monster is cool too. Well, that was the one that had me as a boy because I'm half Scottish. I was obsessed with Nessie and had absolutely no doubt that she existed. And Nessie was always There's referred always a girl? to as she. Well, it's a girl I don't name. Know why. Well, like yes, I guess. Nessie, yes. right? Now I absolutely flatly do not believe. In Loch Ness, yeah. No. They would they would have found it. Well, the point is it can't be in it, first of all. 
there has to be a lot of them. There has to be right. a breeding colony. Right, can't just colony. be one, because yeah. it's eventually going to yeah. die. Yeah. So it has to be a breeding colony. Yeah. Um, and uh, they almost certainly have to breathe air. Oh. In which case, they have to come to the surface to breathe. And even if they only do it momentarily, like whales and dolphins, you see them. But how do you know that? How do you know what it is? How do you know how it operates? Well, uh, if it's if it's some kind of survival from the prehistoric times, it's highly unlikely that it would be, you know, a fish with gills. The other thing is that although although Loch Ness is a huge body of water. Mm -hmm. It's like a hundred miles long and it's very deep. And oh, is I, it? I, I know again by I always comparison pictured a little great, I know yes. it's I know it's big, but it's I always quite, pictured like a little lake in my head no, when I was no, a it's, kid. It's quite narrow, but it's very long and it's extremely deep. Hmm. You can you can stand the Empire State Building on, really? on the bottom of it quite happily and and, oh. and there's still several hundred feet of water above it. But the sediment of peat in the water means that visibility is zero the moment you go any way below the surface you're in total darkness mm. because of the peat sediment in the water that means oh for peat sediment <laughs> that, means, <laughs> that means there's no sunlight there's no daylight there's no warmth etc etc mm. and nothing grows mm. so there's no vegetation for it to feed on and the the fish population of Loch Ness is very is very low. These things are big. They need to eat a lot. Yeah, but know, that doesn't exist to anyway, maintain so, body weight. So yeah. just just from a common sense point of view, it can't, yeah. cannot. No, I think I think you're all right. Be there, I don't. Think. Bigfoots, yes. Loch Ness, no. Because why would that be the only one there? Just there. Well they're not there's uh well they're not at all because they're not no but there's another oh you mean there's other legends very, uh, definitely there's another right. there's another loch near it begins with an m uh loch morag um i i i think which has its own monster and if you go you go to sweden uh and across scandinavia um uh, and ireland uh lake monsters are very much part of the local mythology. Are there ones in Michigan and Wisconsin too? They have their own big feats or lake monsters. Lake monsters. Okay. Yeah. I, it wouldn't surprise oh, me. Oh, write this down. Uh, um, Rain says, "Look into the children of Pyramid Lake." That sounds cool. It does sound cool. What what goes on with the children of Pyramid Lake? I'm gonna guess drowned children come back as ghosts or something like that. Drown, drown children is always a pretty popular uh, yeah. uh, ghost thing. Villages drowned to make reservoirs. Hmm? Say that again. Villages, Villages that are drowned in valleys to make uh, reservoirs for drinking water that reappear when the water levels drop. Oh, I got gotcha. I always thought that was like drowned. Um, sunken ships are very powerful images, I think. Yes. Very spooky. So do we know what goes on with the no, children? Of... Tell us. Of Pyramid Lake. Write it down so we don't forget, though. So that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, and the, and the Michigan and the Wisconsin Lake Monster. I didn't know. Rain Bermuda Triangle was, was a thing, too. Yeah. No. <laughs> I saw something on the internet recently. It said when I was a child, I was made to believe that the... Uh, uh, Bermuda Triangle would be a, a bigger problem or a bigger worry than it actually is because <laughs> we were all terrified about the Bermuda Triangle. You'd read it in books all over, and well, you're you know, all you're right terrified. As long as you don't fly over it. Yes, but saying it was it was made to be like this, you know, huge thing that every time planes went around it, they would get sucked down yes. into the, you yes. know, just yes. obviously was not the case. Maybe rain left. Need to know about the children of Pyramid. Oh, Ma oh Ma hey, you got when you put the word malform in front of children, you have an instant winner. 
dear. Malformed children Malformed would be drowned and like, oh. oh. So, what the, so wow. they would they would like be deliberately drowning the rejects in the lake? Yeah. Is this what you're telling us? Oh my god. So they're angry ghosts. Wow. Oh, I will the um, Falkirk Triangle. The Falkirk Triangle. I've not heard of that one. Where is that? Falkirk is in Scotland. Lest we forget <laughs> Champ, the Lake Champlain monster. Yes, yeah, I that's remember that. Now Cameron, that you mention right? it. Is it? Lake Champlain? Is I don't it? remember. I just I remember the name. Lake Champlain. Yes. Wasn't there something also like the Jersey Devil? Uh S similar. Rain, so Rain says, uh yeah, malformed children would be drowned uh, in the lake. I hope hope I'm well, which I am. I I should should you should visit us here. Oh, Reno. That's Nevada, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, hello from Reno. You're amazing, yeah. Doug. I hope you're well. You should visit us here and go to Virginia City. In Nevada? It must be such a beautiful, spooky place. Cool. We like Jerome. Yes. In Arizona, which is falling down the hill. Yes. Slowly. Great. History. Which is where Maynard from Tool yes. has a Pussifer store yes. and his. Uh, winery is winery. nearby too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I've never been to Reno. I think the only place I've been to in Nevada is Las Vegas. Unfortunately. Strange place. Very unfortunately. Where's the Clown Hotel? The word, You've the seen clown. the Clown Hotel? Are you saying Clown? Clown. Yeah. You're familiar no. with that, David, are you? I've heard of it. I'm not too sure yeah. where it's at. Some haunted hotel with the clown theme. Oh. Somewhere. Very dilapidated old place. Mm. Uh, the Suffolk Madman. That's, upstate New York's I, messy that's cousin. Danny Filth, isn't it? Suffolk Madman. Okay. <laughs> Uh, how did it come about that you went, there you go, ended up lending your voice to several Cradle of Filth Oh, albums. where were you last well, week? Yeah, where were you last week? Um, I recommend that you go and watch uh, uh, last, last week's, week's episode. show. Last when, week on Down to Hell. Our special guest <laughs> was Mr. Daniel Filth, um, who joined us all the way from Suffolk. So you can hear all about that. Hello from Brazil. There. What time is it in Brazil? Is it tomorrow in Brazil? I know, it's probably no. It's probably not that different from here because oh. it's it's down. Better not across, geography than I am, roughly speaking. I think there may be a, f a few hours behind. Stuart knows the Clown Hotel. It's nice and creepy. The Clown Hotel. Yeah, I've seen oh. pictures. It just looks dirty. Ah, though. so Stuart I mean, is in in Scotland. I I don't think he's being entirely serious about the Falkirk Triangle. Oh, <laughs> I would not know this. Can you stay at the clown hotel? I have absolutely no fear of clowns. I think that whole fear of clowns thing is silly. Um, I think I think they could be I'm scared of clowns. Well, people, clowns, I think people really exaggerate clowns, shit. Clowns. Yeah, I think they play George it up. George scared of clowns. <laughs> No, it's a true fact. What's a true fact? Oh, the Falkirk Triangle? Oh, really? See? I thought you, you were doubted Stuart. I thought you were joshing. <laughs> um, I shall I shall tell us about the Falkirk Triangle. <laughs> the, Stuart, nope. Walkers, walk... the Nope Hotel. <laughs> the Nope Hotel. Meaning oh, no to clowns. No, no to clowns. Um so, so Brazil is an hour ahead of us. Oh, there you go. Yes, that's. They were selling the clown ho hotel. I'm oh. not sure if it is sold already. They put in mm. a bit, bit for it. What goes on in the in the Falkirk Triangle, Stuart? Somebody we know will end up buying the clown hotel. Hey guys, speaking of hotels, go stay at the Buffalo Bill House. Yes. <laughs> Well, we, we have to book our, our weekend. Yes, we should talk about that because yeah. we should look at maybe doing that in May. Doing a show from yeah from the Buffalo Bill House. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I've added a link regarding the water baby, so you guys can look into that. 
And now I'll find the link on the Crown Hotel for you too. That's very kind of you. Thank mm -hmm. you, Rain. Uh, I'm I'm Googling as soon as we're done here. <laughs> Stephanie, Stephanie Walter Falkirk said just triangle. a slight ooh feeling with them, meaning clowns, I would guess. Like, yeah, no, I don't get mm -hmm. the. I mean, I would, I, I would. The only reason I would be afraid of a clown is because they look like. Well, I think, you know, I think part think of it is like just that anything that is relentlessly smiling at you. Yeah. Regardless of what I mean, it's there doing. There are very, you know, sad, they're sad looking clowns, yes. obviously. Yes. Um, but the but I the but people really go overboard with their with their oh, I'm so afraid of clowns and the, the silver clown, which was what Bowie, kind of, what Bowie well did. David Bowie um, yes uh, portrayed the silver clown in the that, the ashes to ashes video brilliant brilliant See, video, um, but the the silver clown was uh, was actually a much more scary mm. clown very forbidding controlling whereas the the joeys um were the but yeah there's all different kind of sorts of clowns the ragamuffin clowns that, uh, uh, who didn't uh, speak a different and different sort of mannerisms and very innocent characteristics yes right yes yeah well the joeys are so called uh, uh the, and they they give us the word zany mm. zanies um uh, it comes from Commedia dell'arte, which mm. was the the masked Italian comedy theatre. Yes. Um, and there was the, the what's the, the clown the, starts the, with the P. They were simply known as the Giovannis, the Johnnies, and they right. also became known as the Joeys. But in the Venetian dialect, Giovanni is pronounced Zani. Okay. What is the what is and the clown from, with the from Zani? We got Zani. That starts with the P. It's an Italian word uh, piero yes uh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah piero is 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 the the white um the white conical hat right the, yes the white uniform with with the black buttons yes uh, yeah, yeah yeah he's the love lawn yes figure uh, straight out of the commedia dell'arte again oh uh, see listen listen to this zombie jesus says we have a bridge near us in iowa that if you park your car put baby powder on the trunk and then put it in neutral your car will move and there will be small children handprints on the trunk that nice. that story wow. is probably repeated in in so many small little towns because it because it's the exact same legend in a place that over and me over and again. friends used to go to it's reminding down the me road. of uh and, you know, uh, an orphanage burned down and there was a, a train noise that used to come through and you can hear babies crying and like right. every every town i think has something like that and you know you'll see uh, a truck a ghost headlights will will flash behind you and there'll be a white pickup truck and uh, handprints and yeah you could see steam up your window and you'll see handprints and but i love it i love all that though which feed you know? into into um urban legends mm -hmm. and, and yeah yeah that's what I'm on to say. the steering yep. wheel and all of that um yep. and it's reminding me of uh uh being in the isle of man um anyone from the uk still with us will know what i'm talking about piero is french yes Small, not Italian. Um, uh, um island oh uh, in between the Scottish and English mainland and Ireland in in the middle of the Irish Sea, and I remember there there was there was a bridge, which is called the Ferry Bridge, and when anybody on the island drove over the Ferry Bridge, they always said hello, because to say hello to the little people, yeah, uh, because if you didn't say hello to them, they would come and crash the bridge. They, they would come and seek you out and, mm. and exact a revenge on you nice probably changeling stories yeah. as well See, i love shit like that though the only thing that's ever happened to me at, at a place like that is it, it actually wasn't too long ago and there's the cemetery where there is uh there's a gate but not like a you know big metal gate or anything like that it's just this little wooden gate with a latch and i mean you can very easily get into the the cemetery on the sides but there's just this gate and that's the way you, you need to go in and out apparently if you leave the gate open oh, you let the ghosts the out spirits will yeah. follow you. so when i came out i was very you left it open. no i was very <laughs> careful to close the gate but 
is I was leaving and driving down this road, um, which you could not drive down quickly anyway, because it was it was narrow and you know not like a well paved road or anything. Um, uh, I, something hit my windshield. And no, there was no cars coming. There was nothing, there was nothing else. There was nothing above me. There was, you know, woods on the side, but you know, no, no trees overhanging or anything like that. And there was just um, fields on the other side and something, something hit my windshield. Like a, it sounded like a, a rock, like a big rock or something. Bird shit. It was not bird shit. No, uh, but that freaked me out a little bit, but it would. It did. I was like, all right, thanks. I'm not coming back. This, I get paranormal activity vibes every fortnight. I'm forced to dine with my in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg. <laughs> uh, I didn't used to mind clowns when I was little. Then Stephen King's It hit TV and Tim Curry brought the first. See, now I saw that when I was, I think that came out when I was like eight, nine, ten. And I mean, it's Tim Curry and I love Tim Curry, but it didn't scare me. I mean... It's a great image a little, and it's a great but, idea yeah. living down in the storm drain. You can't look at a storm drain no. without thinking about thinking it. Think of Tim Curry yeah. popping out. I feel like, hey, can I come hang out with you? But it's... <laughs> Goatman. The story is just... Yeah, it's to Stephen King. It doesn't you know. do it, really. Goatman's Bridge. Goatman? I cannot see. Goatman's mm. Bridge. Legend locally. The bridge is known as Goatman's Bridge as it is said to be haunted by half man, half goat. <laughs> You're called the goat man. Are you for real? Really? Actually? Is this goat man? I thought this... that was a character in SNL. Or is that goat boy? <laughs> well, no, satyrs and- um, Yeah, Pan. Uh, uh, the, yeah, great god Pan, half man, Belief half is goat. based on the legend is this of in, black is this in Reno, goat farmer Ryan? You named gotta, Oscar. You gotta... Yeah, what the fuck is going on in Reno? I'm well, Art Bell lived there. there. Yes, he, he said- did. You know, that's why partly Belief why is based on the legend of a black it, farmer named that, Oscar Washburn. I'm not I'm not clear, Rain, whether the, the goats were black or whether the farmer was black, named Oscar Washburn. Who was said to have moved his family to a residence just north of the bridge. Oh. Ah, okay. Yeah, I can't get past Tim Curry, just love him so he doesn't scare me. <laughs> Yeah, it's for real in Texas, an hour away from a bridge. Wait, I'm, I lost track. JM. What is? Is that Goatman's Bridges in Texas? No. Yeah, no. no. What? Is that what he's talking about? I don't know. Next time I'll remember my reading glasses. Yeah, I don't know what we're referring to anymore. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Rain says it's for real. Any state, I found my haunted list. Skinwalker, there's your place. Oh, Skinwalker Ranch, I'm obsessed with that place. It's so fucking weird. You can go. We have to get, make it happen. Yeah, we have to get Brandon on the show, I think. Actually, Contact in communication him. with the guy who owns Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, he's a big I will not, Hellraiser fan. I won't go. He's a huge movie fan in general. He has all sorts of collectibles. Um. I think you do have to think carefully about going there. Yeah, I won't be. You're get, not getting me there. People get uh -uh. like real shit, like brain stuff going on and radiation. Yeah, there's a difference things. between seeing a ghost and going, ah, oh! and getting, you know, radiation to your skull. So, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> Skinwalker's not in Reno. You can't lay claim to everything. In Where Reno. is it? It's in. Um, it's in that state. Uh, Nevada. Utah. Oh, it's in Utah? Yes. Oh. Skinwalker Ranch, yes, yes. Former owner is a trip to, did they, did they? Yes. They were speaking to the own, the previous owners on the they show? They did, yes. Uh, begins with a B, I think. Is that the Hulu show? Is it on Hulu? It's on, um, uh, Uh, is it? I, I, I want to say it's on Discovery. I'm not, I, or is it on the History Channel? I think it's on the History Channel. I'm not sure. It's uh, or one the of travel those channel. channels. It's certainly on Hulu. Carry it, certainly. Yeah. Uh, See, she said people get messed up there. I guess they yeah, do. Yeah. 
Seriously. guy's skull was ballooned up in the back, wasn't it? It's like yeah, a big yeah. fucking tumor looking thing on it. Swelled up and there's crazy things going on. People's phones just start scrolling, yeah. scrolling. And they've got the cameras on the phone. It's just, he's holding it in his hand. It's just scrolling through everything. Whoa. That's just the latest whoa. Apple update. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Bigelow, Bigelow. Then, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Began with the B. I can hear. It's I like can hear that name I coming mean, out of George Knapp's mouth. The Skinwalkers are is is kind of native Native American. Bigelow Aerospace. Uh, shapeshifters. Yeah. Um, uh, it's cattle mutilations. It's UFOs. It's poltergeist activities. This ranch has it's everything. It, it does. <laughs> It really does have everything. Um, See, the documentary is on Hulu, but the show you're watching. Oh, is okay. On- yes, yeah. mm. uh, the documentary that George Knapp is, but the um, the the show is is uh, I watch it on Hulu, but I I think it's the History Channel. Right. It's really cool. Yeah. I uh, can't wait for the radiation. For the yeah, it's like radiation. Isn't that what they yeah. determined it was? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All he did was uh, like an underground, like and a septic something. tank or an mm-hmm. underground water tank with a concrete covering over it, and he moved it to look into it. The yeah. following day, he's got radiation burns. He's feeling weird and a bit sick, and he's got this guy's guy is like a fucking astrophysicist or something. <laughs> They're not kooks. This is yeah, a that's the thing. These aren't like investigation. Yeah, um, and he's got he's got a serious radiation burn mm-hmm. on the side of his head, um, and w- when they were doing it, you know, they 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 walk around with Geiger counters because this happens a lot on the Skinwalker Ranch, and the Geiger counter is off the charts. They went back the next day and put the Geiger counters down there. Nothing. Nothing no. gone moved on um uh, but it's it's uh, forgotten the name of, it's like a whole area it, that skinwalker is on you've watched but a it's lot like more a kind of uh, what, what do i want to say like a like a de- large depression in in the land it's like a, a, big it's like a crater area it, it isn't a crater mm-hmm. i th- there was a point where i thought that was what it was going to turn out to be because it does seem that there's something underground and in the soil that has magnetic properties that is that is creating weird stuff. Well, that's but, what happens, you know, and in, in a lot of times in the it's always with the electronics. You go into like haunted yes, houses yeah. and buildings and things. And then there was that the, the concept of, of what they call a, a fear cage. You've heard me mention that yeah. before to, yeah. to Steve, I think. It's where there's sort of a lot of wiring crossing or some sort of magnetism in the atmosphere and things just aren't sort of you know meshing correctly or or you know opposing each other and it actually will make people sick it'll make them nauseated it'll give them headaches it'll mess with you know they, electronics um, they've they've had that all and it's the not time. necessarily Whenever supernatural they, but they brought in a is it they brought in drones mm-hmm. to fly and so they don't you know they don't just buy drones and do it themselves mm-hmm. they bring in a company that does this professionally and does it for a living yeah in they come we'll, we'll fire up the drones now can we fire up the drones? Um, can we can we fire up the drones? <laughs> Nothing happening. And mm. the guy's looking at it and he's saying, he's saying, you know, to, to his partner, um, did you check the batteries before we left? You see, of course I did. We always do. They charge the batteries the night before and they check the batteries before they leave. When they go out on a job, everything was fully charged. And when it came time to fly the drones on Skinwalker Ranch, every single battery was drained. Yeah. And Doesn't that, it happen know, when I went to all the time. Uh, Trans-Allegheny for my first uh, time in like 2008 uh, for, you know, I don't think I went into iPhones. iPhones are just coming out back then, I think. Of oh, course, I didn't have yeah. one of those, but I had my uh, digital camera all loaded up, all charged up, ready. And turned it on and went psst, just totally died and then mm. something happened with uh my friend's flashlight she had fresh batteries in it 
and then cut out. So just yeah. Now. Yeah. Now. Yeah, it's very, very, very familiar that one. The draining battery and the malfunctioning electronics. <laughs> but it seems to be something actually in the soil under the ground yeah. that's screwing with stuff. Yes. So where are we at here with time? 9.52. We should probably yeah, wrap I this so. up. It's been soon. fun. We really haven't talked about much. Well, I mean, you yeah, know, just yes sort we of, have. well, you know, just sort of hopped around all over. Yeah. And, much yeah. I was a fire truck. Doug used to be a horse. Yeah. <laughs> I was a spy. <laughs> grocery store. What else? Where are the bullet points? What's our bullet points from the meeting? Virginia fire City truck, and horse. And everything happens in Reno, apparently. Yeah. I, I, hmm. As long as I don't have to go near Vegas ever again. But I, want good. To, I want to have a look at Virginia City, Nevada, see what all that's about i've got to look up um rain i don't lake, believe that people Falkirk triangle uh you cannot um <clears throat> i think mods are the only people who can post uh links in the chat so nobody nobody deleted that um you might be able when the video is over and is reposted you can put it in the comments it should take there but i don't believe in chat you can uh, uh, leave a link because all sorts of you know things yeah, could happen from that like to leave the wrong kind of links i watched someone get peen bombed on a on a on a youtube get, live getting what bombed? peen bombed someone flashed their nether regions on someone's youtube live <laughs> the other wow. night. yeah this is it's this quite is, hilarious this is referred to as peen bomb peen <laughs> yeah i mean you know is there a, a female equivalent i'm sure there is yeah oh oh word the the word it well that doesn't typically happen you know it's the Batch women bombing w women um tend not to do it uh, on youtube it's not? usually the men who it is are... it's 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 a male problem. it's not it is, but i certainly. don't but but peen bombing i don't think it's necessarily <laughs> any sort of a weird fetish or anything it's it's because people hate certain people on youtube so they want to fuck up their videos so they have to take it down right. and they can't yes. get the watch minutes yes. for it <laughs> to fucking the whole thing. anyway what the fuck are we talking about um <clears throat> minutes from the meeting no i don't know i, I don't know I, well bowling I alley draculas uh horses fire trucks horses fire trucks big feet um big feet's bully rectory bully rectory skinwalker ranch bad clowns not so much <laughs> um and uh malformed children Mal drowned in lakes that's the one put that yes, I've got put an there. asterisk by that one i'm googling that as soon as we're done here Mal uh, malformed Scottish children triangles. you had me at malformed <laughs> children <laughs> i'm gonna i'm putting that on a shirt what? you had me at malformed children <laughs> For sale next week on the website, everyone. There you go. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, <clears throat> I'm very hungry. Wait. <clears throat> Something about an opera house. The Pipers, uh -oh. the Pipers Opera House in BC. Is that is that Victoria uh, something in, Victoria? In Vancouver. Vancouver? Is that Vancouver? The Pipers Opera House in BC is super cool and quite old. Write that down too. Uh, it went, Virginia it went away. City. Did you write Virginia City? I down? did. Virginia that City. That sounds pretty Milan. cool. Lots going on there. Piper's Opera House. Piper's Opera House in BC. Okay. We should start visiting all mm -hmm. these places, doing shows from them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Doug, you made night. Uh, okay. You made yeah. rain's oh, night. Good. Yeah. Well, it's very we kind of no you, Ray. Thank you. Um, I was looking forward to seeing you in Reno. Well, maybe but you had to Reno, pull. or Days you'll have to travel to Vegas Oh, for Days next of the time. Dead. Yeah. Or, well, um, the canker and the COVID made that not possible. Yeah, we would have been there. Yep. Or Phoenix. How far is Phoenix from Reno? Not too far, possibly. We do <laughs> Virginia City. Virginia City, Water Babies, Clown Motel. Clown Motel. Right. Got it. Horses and fire trucks. Yes. And, uh, uh back next week with back next week with bill, bill mosley
the crazy, crazy, Bill. wonderful, beautiful. That's going to be good. Um, we got to talk about Bill Timothy Leslie. Leary. Who? We got to talk about Timothy Leary. He worked with Timothy he Leary. He did work with Timothy yeah. Leary. Yes, yes. Smart dude, that, that Mr. Mosley. He is. But um, all right. Okay, that's enough. Or as we say here in Pittsburgh. All right. All right. All right. Talk to you later.